Hi, I'm Barney from Autoglim, the UK's leading car care specialist. We supply products and expertise to global car companies all over the world. We also help the everyday motorist too. In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean, polish and protect your vehicle. Giving your car a really good clean can really maximise the amount of money you can get when you come to sell it. So in this video, we're going to be going through a lot of kit and information, but please check out Auto Trader's free downloadable PDF for a summary. So what do you need to clean a car? To start with, I'm going to use a dedicated wheel cleaner. This is going to help break down that bond of the brake dust to the alloy wheel. Also going to use some brushes as well. I'm then going to use a pH neutral shampoo to clean the bodywork, two buckets of clean water, a good quality sponge and a hose. So we're going to go through a three step process, which is clean, polish and protect. Before putting any fluid onto any surfaces, you need to make sure they're cool to the touch. Why? Because if you put any liquid onto any warm surface, it's just going to evaporate away and not let the products do its job. So I'm going to apply clean wheels, spraying it bottom upwards, also hitting the tyre as well. It's important to apply it bottom upwards so it runs onto a treated surface. So I'm using a nice soft wheel brush here. It's important you concentrate on the areas where the brake dust really attracts. So inside the spokes, the wheel nuts and also finishing off on the tyre as well. It's worth spending a bit of extra time on the wheels as they're often neglected but it's an area that people really, really notice. So that's the wheels done. It's time to move on to the bodywork. It's important to use the right amount of product. Two catfalls is all you need. If you put too much in, it's going to be difficult to rinse and can leave streaks. Now we're going to rinse the car off. It's important you make sure the car is out of direct sunlight when you do this. Why? Because otherwise, it's going to dry too quickly and leave watermarks. It's important to rinse the car top down to remove the loose dirt, because you don't want to be shampooing the dirt back into the paintwork. When sponging the car, go in straight lines the way that light goes over the car, working top down. You don't want to go in circles because that's what puts swirls into the paintwork. When rinsing off, rinse off in the clean bucket of water. That way transferring any of the loose dirt from your sponge back into there, then you can go back into your shampoo and therefore not getting any dirt. So once you've finished, with the leftover shampoo you can do inside the doors and also the tailgate. You don't want to put too much soap in there because it's going to take a little while to rinse out. When you're washing a car, you want to make sure that the vehicle is completely clean by making sure all the little areas that you often neglect, they're areas you want to spend an extra time because they really make a difference at the end of the job. Once you've got the car completely covered in shampoo, you need to rinse it off, working top down, pushing any of the loose dirt off to the floor. I'm using a hose here, but you could use a pressure washer. Because I've got the perfect dilution in the bucket, we're not getting any excess shampoo and foam coming up from the door handles. Also, you can see the water is sheeting off, leaving the car almost dry. After rinsing the shampoo off, it's important to dry the vehicle. I'm going to be using a drying towel. It's soft microfiber to make sure it's not going to damage any of the paintwork. Microfiber cloths are very absorbent and also really easy to clean. It's important when you're this close to a car that you haven't got any belts or zips or any jewellery on that can risk damaging the paintwork. Polishing is the second step because it's going to bring the shine back to the car. I'm going to use super resin polish and a perfect palm. Perfect palm, as you can see, fits nicely into the palm of your hand to stop you getting cramped as you're using it and also gets the right amount of polish onto the car. I'm polishing using overlapping circles to make sure we get an even coverage onto the paintwork. When you get to an edge, do a straight line rather than going over it. That way you won't put any polish into the cracks. It's worth spending extra attention on the bonnet, roof and tailgates, the flat panels. They're the ones that give you the maximum reflection and also the most visual areas to see on the car. So for the chrome trim here, I'm going to be using soft cloth. So this is going to remove any water spotting or any of the tarnished areas. It's quite happy to be applied on top of the headlights as well. Once the whole car's covered in polish, come back round to where you started. And as long as it's dry to a haze, if you flick it and it goes straight through, it's ready to come off. You can also polish the chrome around the windows as well. I'm going to use a soft microfiber cloth to remove using small circles. A lot of people think that polishing your cars can be difficult, but by using a good quality polish and a good quality microfiber cloth, it makes the job a lot easier. Step three, protection. After polishing the car, we're now going to lock in the shine using extra gloss protection. This is going to put an even further layer over top of the polish and really lock in that shine. I'm applying this using straight lines, using a brand new Perfect Palm. Leave this to dry for between 30 to 60 minutes before buffing off to get maximum protection. By putting this extra layer of protection on, 
it makes it so much easier to clean the next time you have to. So you can use a wash mitt or you can use a sponge. Often your sponges are inexpensive and you can change them more regularly, therefore they'll be a lot safer on the vehicle. Wash mitts are great, but often used way past their sell-by date. Each step of the process, you want to make sure you use a clean cloth, because you don't want to risk damaging the paintwork. If you fold the cloth into quarters, you now have eight clean sides to work with. Dirty glass is instantly noticeable. By using car glass polish, it quickly cuts through any grime, greasy fingerprints, and other dirt that's on the glass. Here's a quick tip. Drop the window down half a crack, so you can just do this scum line at the top. If you leave the window up, you're not going to get it, and it's still going to be visible. That's the glass done. It's now time for those finishing touches. So we started with the wheels, and we're going to finish with the wheels. I've cleaned the tile off already, but now I'm going to dress it using instant tire dressing to give it that deep black new look again. Buff the excess off with a clean cloth and allow to dry. This is aloe wheel seal. It's going to help discourage brake dust and other dirt. So now you know the three steps. Clean, polish, protect. So there you have it. Spending a couple of hours on the car can add hundreds of pounds to the value.